What's up Moniverse, Dr. Dave here. Welcome to the Geek Lounge. On today's video, we are catching up with some more Fungo Pop parcels. Let's see what we got. <sighs> All right guys, we've got quite a few parcels to get through, so let's not waste any time. We'll crack this very first one open here, which is from popfigures.com. You get your usual popfigures.com sticker and the usual popfigures.com jelly beans. Now I am a little bit puzzled because I was only expecting three figures when we actually have four here. I was thinking maybe one of them was just a sorter box, you know, for packing purposes, but they all feel like they've got some weight to them. Uh, what I was expecting was three of the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood figures. The only one I was waiting on was Scar. I don't believe they dispatched it and I believe it has been delayed in its release. Maybe it hasn't. I mean, the only way to find out is to crack these bad boys open. The uh, Edward Elric figure has a uh, chase edition as well, so we could potentially get that. So so let's open this one up first. Maybe there is another figure in here. I'm forgetting that they did dispatch as well and they just grouped it together. So the first figure we have here, guys, is Reza Hawkeye. If I'm not mistaken here from the back, yet, yeah, Reza Hawkeye there as part of the new Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood line of figures. These do all come in pop protectors with popfigures.com as well, with their own branded popfigures.com protectors. And the second figure here, guys, let's pop this one open. We do have, it is Olivia, I always forget what her middle name is, Mira. Olivia Mira Armstrong, the, uh, what was she like, the major general of Fort Briggs or whatever it is. I mean, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail when we take a closer look at the figure. And this one next, guys, let's open that up. Can't tell what that is from here. Really? Roberto Firmino, Liverpool. Um, yeah, this is like toilet paper to me being a Man United fan, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Did they run a promotion where they were giving away a free Funko Pop? I mean, there we go. Roberto Firmino, but yeah, Liverpool, uh, the arch enemy of my team. Still cool to get a free Funko Pop though, I guess. And so this should be Edward Elric. Let's see, did we get the chase? Will we lucky? I still really can't tell from here. You can definitely see the back. It is Edward Elric. We did not. It is just the common version, which is perfectly fine. I believe it is the same figure, the Chase version just glows in the dark. And I guess we'll go in the order that I open the boxes, starting with Reza Hawkeye. I think, what was her rank? She was like the Lieutenant, and wasn't she like the number two, or like right hand of um, of Roy Mustang? And I think King Bradley also brought her in as his, uh, again, like right hand or whatever, like obviously using her in those sort of war efforts. But yeah, Reza Hawkeye was a really cool character. I think she was also a sniper, like a sort of world-class sniper from what I do remember as we're going around the back here of the figure, she's got the hair tied up. I think there's some pretty nice detail there in the hair. You do always get some of those seams though. It's not too bad um, on this figure with the, you know, whenever they do like front piece of hair, we've got the earrings as well. And then she is holding, I, I think it's a dog, right? I was trying to think, did she ever? have a dog in the series? I mean, it's been a long, long time since I've actually watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, um, so I don't quite remember, and I actually didn't even like notice this. I have seen this figure in person before um, while I was waiting for my order to come in, and I didn't even notice she was holding a dog, so yeah. Pretty cool addition, uh, or, or I should say first addition to the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood wave. Well, I guess technically she's not the first edition because she's like the second figure in the set, whereas Edward Elric is the first, but we'll get to him in just a second. First, we have Olivia Mira Armstrong. I mentioned it before. I think she was like Major General, something like that was her rank, uh, you know, in charge at Fort Briggs, the commander like of the North, essentially, the northern borders of Amestrius. I, I guess like the, the, the sort of Jon Snow in the Full Metal Alchemist realm, right? Um, at the back here, she does have one of these like almost like floating style stands. I don't know what that's all about, whether because the figure looked, like was quite heavy or anything like that, because she's certainly not floating. Again, some nice sort of detail there in the hair, but you, you know, a pretty obvious seam there for the front part that does come over her eye. She is holding the sword out there. I mean, she was like this real badass character, part of the, you know, the Armstrong, I don't know if they call them clans necessarily in, um, in Full Metal Alchemist, but, you know, part of the Armstrong family anyway, famed for its strength. Yeah, another really, really cool figure and another really cool character. And lastly, we do have one of the two main protagonists of the series, Edward Elric here. He's essentially doing his alchemy, right? I, I mean, there might be a, a more correct term and things for, for exactly what he is doing here. Like I said, it's been quite a while since I have seen the show, but I think there is some really nice detail here 
on this figure, all that sort of power, that energy going up over his body onto his head as well. You've got the ponytail almost kind of like flowing in the wind there, the jacket coming up as well. There is also some detail there on the base. Uh, I, I guess it is, like I said, he's, he's essentially doing alchemy and the, even the base has some of the detail up in there. Again, apologies, there probably is more of a like, correct or, or better term that, that's certainly used within the show. But yeah, some really nice detail on it. Uh, I think certainly a little bit more detailed than the, uh, the the first figure, or at least, you know, from the Full Metal Alchemist range. As I said, this is from the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood range, the first uh, figures in this series. They haven't done another Alphonse, but he did get two in the previous series as well. As I mentioned as well, the uh, Chase version of this, I believe it's exactly the same. The uh, It's just like the energy, the alchemy powers glow in the dark. And as I mentioned, Scar is also available in this first wave of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood figures. You guys can see him there on the back. But for whatever reason, he has been delayed, so he hasn't released just yet. There is also the Greed figure, though I can't remember if he is actually under the FMA wave or the FMA B wave. I'd imagine it would be the new wave, right? But I, I can't entirely remember off the top of my head. Parcel number two, guys, is from DJ Collectibles, Danny and Jazz. And I actually forgot to mention, uh, you know, with each parcel, uh, not only are the parcels going up in size, but so are the Fungo Bops. And here we go, guys. We have, let me just get rid of this, the specialty series Gigantomachia from My Hero Academia. And let me just show off the back to you guys as well because it does contain the latest wave of My Hero Academia figures, at least the common wave. These I am still waiting on from popfigures.com. Hopefully they will come in very, very soon. And this is the very first time I'm seeing this figure in person and boy, is it a cool one. I've never seen it in any of the stores. I don't really see it available to pre-order too much online either. I think it is maybe still available on Pop in a Box if I'm not mistaken, though I certainly don't recommend them, but you know, we're not getting into that. This is all all about the figure and yeah like I said it's a really cool one look at the detail on the back there the spikes in the hair uh, certainly on his back you know Gigantomachia he has already appeared a few times in the anime but he's certainly gonna figure a lot more in the uh, coming season slash seasons uh, he's, he's kind of really like the I don't, I don't know what the destructor the the big weapon uh, that the villains use as we go back round to the front but yeah look at that the detail there on the face the teeth kind of protruding from that sort of rock like jaw with the uh, like cassette player boombox whatever it's called around his neck uh, yeah just really really cool detail I mean all of the My Hero Academia figures have some amazing detail and this is just another one of those to add to that ever-growing collection and next up here from the Funko shop from FunkoEurope.com guys we have a pop movie moment or is it pop movie moment or is it pop ride it's pop ride I think it is yeah there we go ride guys I am of course talking about the Thor Love and Thunder Goat Boat. And now I know the movie didn't get a lot of love, but I have to say I did enjoy it. Was it as good as Thor Ragnarok? No, but I still enjoyed it nonetheless and did find it funny. I think the humour was probably sillier compared to Thor Ragnarok, which was, you know, like cleverer. Uh, in terms of its comedy, its lines, etc. But when you think about it, the movie was told from the perspective of Korg. And now he, as we know, he kind of overemphasizes things. He makes things like seem bigger, cooler, wilder than they actually were. So I think that's kind of, you know, really what the whole movie was about. But in terms of love, everyone has to love this pop. This has to be one of the best pop rides they have released in a long, long time. We're kind of getting round again here to the side here. Asgard tours, Thor there, right? the goat boat we've got some viking shields there on the back we are of course uh, on the uh, on the rainbow bridge uh, which uh, with the bifrost i guess is part of the bifrost right we've even got some flames there as the boat is riding the bifrost again more viking uh, shields there as we get to the back again asgard towards as Tours, pardon me, as well. We also see Stormbreaker there, which is essentially the gear stick, you know, the control rod for the goat boat. We also have like a dragon style, uh, what do they call that? Are they just like figureheads? Is that what the term was for the like front of the boat? I mean, maybe there is more of a technical term. And then we do, of course, have the goats as well. There's even some, you know, colors there as they're dashing along that rainbow bridge. I think they did actually have names, um, but I can't entirely remember. I think I saw something on the front of the box. You guys will see, I've got a bit of plastic. I've, I've kind of left that in there because I am just going to pop these back into the box afterwards but some nice details there uh, on the goat especially one of them with 
its tongue hanging out. I, I guess they were pretty annoying, right? Screaming goats, it was like a meme uh, for a very long time. But um, yeah, I still found them funny to an extent. Maybe they did overdo it with the goats. But yeah, what they didn't overdo, or maybe they did overdo and exceed expectations on, like I said, is this Funko Pop, one of the best pop rides I've seen for a very long time. And the next pop is definitely a pop moment, guys. It is the Elliot and E.T. glow in the dark Funko Pop moment. And just like that Thor ride, guys, I think this is one of the best pop moments they've done in a long time as well. Just look at the detail on that. Elliot flying there on the bicycle with E.T. in the front basket with the moonlight in the background and all the trees below as well. Very, very cool. We're getting around to the, the sort of backside down, to be honest, there is nothing on the back. I mean, you could really lay this up like against a shelf or a back wall, as you guys can see, it is really just, uh, you know, a flat surface. So let's get back around to the front where all the detail is. There he is, guys, E.T., really happy, covered in a blanket there in the basket at the front of the bike there. We've also got Elliot. I mean, his eyes are like, like sleepy a little bit, you know, like they're like a third or, or quarter closed, right? I don't know. It's been a hell of a long time since I've seen the movie. Um, yeah, I, I, maybe because he's going into the moon as well, like the moonlight's kind of shining in his eyes. But uh, yeah, look at the detail on the bike as well. Looks very, very cool. As I said, we've got the moon in the background along with the trees of the like forest area down below as well. Like, yeah. Just a really, really cool moment, like I said. Funko have outdone themselves with one of their best pop rides and one of their best pop moments that they've released. Maybe the two best in their categories this year. But as I said, guys, this also does glow in the dark. So let's check that out. Right, it's still during the day, so I've tried to find the darkest place in the house that I could. And I've had the torch on here a while, guys. And boom, that is pretty cool. I reckon if you had the torch on there for a lot longer, it would probably be quite brighter. Uh, obviously it's not like pure darkness in here either because I reckon you get like a nice sort of silhouette effect with Elliot and E.T. if you know you kind of kept the torch on there and like I said if it was a little bit darker but yeah that is still a really really cool glow in the dark. And now guys oh, we have the big boy I mean you guys can already tell right there what it is. Uh, yeah, this might take me a few seconds to get this out. Oh, I'm not gonna lie guys, that took me more than a few seconds. It was like really wedged in there, as you guys can see. Look at that, the 18 inch All Might. Yeah, I now need to open this box and actually get the figure out as well. Here we go guys, apologies uh, if you did hear that annoying sound. It's gonna be hard to actually fit this in the shop. There is the front of the box as well, you guys can see. It does, well, it's not really a sticker, it's printed on the uh, special edition one there. I think this was a GameStop exclusive in the US, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I'm assuming it's like exclusive to Funko Europe here in the UK, that's where it released to, uh, retailing for £400. I think it is still available, it sold out uh, quite quickly and then seemed to come back into stock. And they did actually have it on, um, I think the thing finished last night actually, where they did like their spend and save. And I think if you spend, so this, like I said, it was a hundred pounds. If you spent 110 pounds, I think you actually got 25 pounds off. So uh, yeah, you could have got this and then maybe added like a 10 pound mini moment or something. And, uh, and then actually got 25 pound off and essentially got this at a mini moment for 85 pounds, which I think is a really good deal for this figure. And here he is, guys. Well, actually, he's just got some wrapping on him. On him, uh, pardon me. Let's just get that out. Yeah, guys, look at that. And just about fit him in shot there. Let me get rid of this box. Because so I don't know uh, if he's going to be too heavy for the turntable as well. So there he is, guys. Look at that. The 18 inch All Might. This is only my second 18 inch figure. I have the, uh, the Batman one. Uh, in the other room. I didn't really want to pick up too many because they do take up so much room But when I saw this one, I thought yeah, I've got to have it a big My Hero Academia fan, especially All Might. I kind of miss the character uh, To be perfectly honest at least in this form anyway There is the back so you guys can check that out. I do actually have this figure now in like the regular form the uh, uh, What did they do in 10 inch uh, 10 inch glow in the dark even and it's actually a really good glow in the dark And now I do have the 18 inch one as well guys 
Yeah, very, very cool. And well guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. First and foremost, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me here on the Geek Lounge. It is very much appreciated, and I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If so, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Drop some comments below. What Funko Pops have you guys picked up recently? And the Funko Pop unboxings will continue in tomorrow's video. We'll be opening up a bunch of Star Wars Funko Pops, Obi-Wan Kenobi Funko Pops to be specific from the recent Kenobi TV series. That will form part of our continued Star Wars celebration here on the Geek Lounge. And speaking of celebrations, guys, starting from Monday, we will be celebrating all things Naruto. It is the 20th anniversary of the release of the Naruto anime, which is actually on Monday itself. So we have plenty of Naruto content coming for you guys throughout the month of October so make sure you stay tuned for all of that and more what is the easiest way to stay tuned it's very simple subscribe hit click smash that subscribe button and enable those notifications so you don't miss out on any of that future content guys thanks again for watching today's video and we will see you on the next one peace out nerds